almost impossible to go live. I've been so freaking busy. Oh my goodness. It's hard to balance it all when you're just one person. But I made it tonight. So let's see who joins the conversation. I thought I would read some some comments. I'm just going from the latest ones that I've gotten all the way down and some concerns and some of the things I've been researching lately. It's just been very, very interesting, this histamine journey, for example. A lot of you guys will do intermittent fasting. Don't forget to say hello so I can see your comments come in. But a lot of people will be doing fasting or they'll do carnivore because they think that it's going to fix their histamine issues. And it sort of does in the beginning. Thank you, JG. Hello. It does in the beginning, and then people have this weird rebound reaction. They're like, I was doing so great, now I'm doing so crappy. Like, what's up? Hi, everyone. So, um, is something as simple as the aging of your meat? You know, a lot of people are saying, eat beef, eat butter, eat bacon. But all of those three are all very high histamine foods. And then we have the problem of people with gallbladder issues. And as much as I want to just promote strictly keto, I know that I cannot because so many people have a gallbladder issue. And they have an underlying, I think every consultation I ask, have you gone up to 200 grams of fat? And they'll be like, oh yeah, I had coconut oil. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That does not count because it's a medium chain. Hi, everyone. It's a medium chain triglyceride, so you do not need medium chain, meaning, meaning small and particle size. This means you do not need a gallbladder to digest coconut oil or MCT oil. And you don't really have to deal with the LCT, which is the long chain triglycerides, in olive oil because it is mostly monounsaturated fat. Nice to see everyone. So... There are those nuances that you have to be concerned about, like, do you have a gallbladder issue? Do you know the symptoms? Because a lot of people will make ketones and they won't use them. They'll have cloudy urine. They'll have buddy, bubble, buddy, bubbly urine, which is unfortunately a huge symptom of protein loss. So a lot of people are doing too much protein on a carnivore diet. They don't realize they have a weak gut wall. And then they'll pound down the protein and they'll have cloudy urine or they'll have bubbly urine. And it's these small things a lot of people are unaware of. And why did I not drink more water before we started this whole thing? Now I have to drink on camera. So um, I'm going to go into some of the comments that I've been getting on my page. So this person wrote, dry versus old packaged turned meat from grocery store being eaten huh dry age versus old packaged more histamine issues from dry age so yes you've got either dry aged or wet aged so wet aged is going to be uh processed more quickly because they're going to seal it into a bag and put it on ice whereas a dry aged they might actually hang it longer up to 20, 30 days and enzymes will break down things. A flavor will come out of the meat, but it's collecting bacteria. That includes your ox bile when it's pure ox bile salts. And um, that includes your bacon, your sausage, your uh, meat. That's just your Costco meat, your Sam's Club meat, your Kroger's and your Ralph's and all this kind of stuff. So we're, we're all now trying to find meats that are as fresh as possible. And that goes beyond being grass-fed or not. Uh, let me see. I have brutal psoriatic arthritis. And I would it would mean the world to me if you could recommend a diet for me to try. I don't know if you're, you're ever going to come, come across anyone with psoriatic arthritis who's gotten better from a diet. But any advice would mean a lot. So I've worked with people with rheumatoid arthritis, and I know the psoriatic or rheumatoid, I can't talk, turd, or osteoarthritis, they all have similar affectation. So 
yes, I have seen people benefit and, and have taken down their inflammation exponentially. It's very difficult because I can't prescribe a diet for someone until I know, like, does your gallbladder work? Do you have enough stomach acid? Um, do you know the status of your electrolytes? Because they're all going to weigh once you like do diets like this. My day is, somebody asked, hey, Steph, how's your day treating you? It's been beautiful. Uh, it, 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 today is my mother's 80th birthday and 16 years from surviving a glioblastoma brain tumor. They gave her less than three months to live. Still alive. 80th birthday. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> she was in a good mood until the very end and then she started getting all pissy. All right, this is off topic. Look at the perfect recipe for butter. Skip the chalet, the shallot in the beginning, but also sounds good. And somebody wrote butter, lemon, egg yolks, and salt. What a great way to get your butter in. And then there's a video, but I'm on my phone. So let's see here. I'm so, I'm so grateful you understand what's going on with the blubber. What is the blubber? Awesome. Keep up the good work and tell us more about exactly what you eat and how you cook it. So let's go on with that right now. Now, I eat all meats. Not so much the lean ones. But I have pork. I have chicken. I have turkey legs. I have fish. I have heart, beef heart, ground beef, uh, ground pork, uh, lamb, uh, deer. I just said that first because I just processed it. Processed the deer myself and it's in my freezer. Um, I have lamb, bison, you name it. If it's an animal, Except for the bugs. I ain't going to eat no bugs. Okay. Um, how I cook it is I like it sort of bloody. I did try the raw thing. I just I kind of got bored with it for a while. And then I became concerned about the bacteria issue. Yeah. So there's that. Um, somebody wrote keto plus carnivore plus low carb high fat, low carbivore. There's no such thing. Sorry. You can't be carnivore and be eating carbs. That makes no sense. No. Okay. So dear Stephanie on low carb diet, what range should you be with your blood sugar levels? Fingers crossed for quite a, quite a was, uh, she's in my last uh, real like interview to feel better. So the ranges for blood sugar are between 80, 75, Sorry, 75, 2, and 83. I guess my, my uh, light went out. 75, 2, and 83 is um, probably best anyway that I'm not exposed to all that blue light. 75, 2, and 83 is the range, but you also have to put that with your ketones. You just can't do blood sugar because your blood sugar could be, let's say, a 75 or even a 74, but your ketones are at a 0 0.5 and that's hypoglycemia. And dare I say, you could actually have ketones between a 1.8 and a 3.0 and still not be in ketosis. So symptomology goes with it as well. Somebody said I did the six months of carnivore diarrhea, diarrhea thing happened too. I used to think that I needed to add low carb veggies to fix it, but found out that it was that it was really what I've come to refer to as pro protein toxicity. When I lowered my protein and raised my fat and split my meals up, no more OMAD, my bowel movements got totally normal. It stunned me. I don't have all of the answers, but I have sure learned a lot from Stephanie and Dr. Siwas and Judy Cho, etc. Uh, let's see. Good stuff. Healing stuff. Uh, definitely involving the thing. I really enjoy steak, homemade sauerkraut. So you got to be careful for the sauerkraut. Uh, you got to be careful for the sauerkraut. 
I'd say about 70% of the people um, that I work with can't eat sauerkraut because just too much bacteria if they're having like severe histamine. So a lot of people don't even know they have histamine. Hey Steph, I had a question and it's about the ketone meter. I'm a month in my ketones and the first two weeks, the ranges were 1.5 to 2.4, but now a month in my ketones dropped down to 0.3 almost every day. And this is a really great, great, this is a great question. <laughs> this is a great question, Dudley, because in the beginning, people will have like the extreme reactions. Either they're like, they do amazing or they do horrible. You did amazing. The body catches up. You made ketones very easy. Now the body's not making ketones and it's probably because of you know, there's other backslapping reactions that happen when you do a ketogenic diet, like your blood sugar becomes unstable. So what's your blood sugar or, you know, if you're not in ketosis, your sleep can go down. You might develop constipation doing keto or carnivore. You might be overtraining. Who knows? You might be eating high histamine foods because a lot of people eat the same thing all the time. And then all of a sudden their ketones drop because the diversity of food has gone. So I don't know. I need to know more details. Okay. Mm, but that's a good question, I think. I think that's a good question. Um, sounds... And, and people aren't really making comments. On my channel, they ask questions. Um, sounds almost just like my story, except macas, which means... Uh, mast cell activation includes severe histamine intolerance and SIBO symptoms. Thanks a million. That's my horses. I'm sorry. <laughs> Big animals on the loose. Uh, thanks a million, Stephanie. I will listen to the rest of your podcast after unusually AM sunny cold weather, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, forest, lakeside walk. And... Okay. Uh, every time you say I'm 55, almost 56, I cringe. <laughs> Not because of you, but because that's my age. I'll be 56 in May. <laughs> I'm definitely not feeling good yet. LOL. Working on it, though. That's funny. Well, you know, for a long time, I didn't say my age because not because I was afraid to say my age. It's just that people will judge you for the age that you are at. And I'm so young, like I wasn't ready to be, you know, I'm not ready for people to treat me like I'm 55. Like I'm not, I'm too immature. I'm too crazy. I'm too adventurous and I'm too much into discovery. And so, yeah. So Dudley says, hi, Stephanie, besides learning from helping people, how do you approach learning from research articles, books, especially when it comes to knowing what info is like correct, basically, or what info that I trust? And I'll get to you, Dudley, in a second. Um, this is very easy. So I've been researching things over on the internet. You guys have seen me here on like since 2010. So it's like 13 years. And what I do is I have clients. I have I've had clients before I even went on the internet for two years. And I'll take something that happens to someone, and then I will like you know let's say constant uh, constipation. And so I don't just use like keto or carnivore or low carb, high fat as my barometer or gauge, I will just use kind of like what's logical. So I start learning about constipation, like what can make you develop constipation? Well, a lot of people develop constipation because they are low electrolytes so they can't hold on to their minerals or stress, right? The stress will slow down peristalsis or their thyroid will become underactive and then they can't poop or they'll have a bacterial overgrowth and then they can't poop or they'll develop low stomach acid and then they can't poop. Um, and then some people are chronically constipated, but then the colon becomes compacted and that tube it stretches. Once that thing stretches, it can't push very well out the poop. And then of course a stuck ileocecal valve. So once I know all of like the eight things that cause constipation or like the thyroid, like I said, then I'll start going and asking people, do you have a thyroid issue? You know, 
do you have problems with chronic constipation for a very, for a very, very long time? Do you have heart stool? Um, I will ask um, about candida or parasitical overgrowth because all of these things can slow down motility. Poor sleep and stress can slow down more mo motility and people can't poop. Too much sugar, like having too much sugar in your diet can damage your body. Uh, drinking alcohol and taking birth control pills. And I'm starting to remember more. Um, taking like SSRIs or like any type of pharmaceutical because your stomach acids drop, your liver is overburdened, and then all of a sudden motility drops. So that's how I learn. You know, when it comes to ketones, I've had con uh, clients for years get glucometers. I think I was the only one pushing people to use glucometers for years and years and years and years. And can you imagine notebook after notebook after notebook of data, learning what foods, like fat, how much fat. That's where I started understanding that 200 grams is when people's ketones start popping back up. And I don't mean like cooked fat. I mean fat on their plates. So this is how I learn. I learn through people and just through basic science. It's it, The problem is... Like when people start saying that if you're carnivore and you're not pooping, that's normal. And I wanted to sit and, you know, like poke my eyeball out. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like you have to poop my people every day. Your body only extracts what it needs from all that protein. The rest must come out Djibouti. I didn't say Djibouti. Okay, I said Djibouti. So... When it doesn't, you have toxins reabsorb back into the bloodstream and it's like continuing to activate this negative loop and uh, this cycle. And so you don't need to be a freaking have a PhD or have an MD to know that y'all need to poop my people. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, one guru will listen to another guru, not use their critical thinking and start pushing the constipation as normal thing. They're not looking at electrolyte imbalances, dehydration, thyroid. They don't look at those things. It's like it doesn't exist. Excuse me. I eat ri white rice as a carb source. Is that okay? Talvish, if you're not doing keto and you're doing low carb, high fat, that's fine. Uh, I realize I'm going to do more on this subject with people who come from the celiac world because I'm getting a lot of people who got celiac, right? And so they can't eat wheat, but then the brain starts to cross react it starts to turn, turn rice into wheat. And I've known this, but it's taken me really working with one person. There's a person I'm working, uh, working with in this town. Um, and we talk a lot and we just were like, dude, we, I, I had, a, had him eliminate. He first did not react to the rice, but then after a while he started to develop diarrhea. We weren't sure if, what it was because he has a gallbladder issue and it was the rice. So as long as you don't have a problem with the rice, you get to go. Okay. So somebody writes, fasting is so hard in the body. It seems, oh, sorry, it seems it stems from a lifestyle. The non what in Western world lives anymore. Okay. No one. It just puts all out, out let, puts our bodies into a fight or flight state, which is so damaging unless there's a saber tooth tiger chasing you. Very true. Oh yeah, I gotta go back to that one question. You've fallen off the wagon for so long. My question is, what do you contribute for you staying on course? Thanks and much love. Now this is a great question. I don't know why people get triggered on questions. I think they're awesome. That's how I learn by listening to other people's questions and the answer. So when people fall off the wagon, I'm going to tell you something. I popped out of ketosis and I should do like an official I popped out of ketosis video. But I popped out of ketosis when I moved to from Texas to Tennessee. I, just, I couldn't deal with the stress. I just couldn't. The stress was on a level like my driver backed out. I, I had my my RV camper delivered, but not the horses. And then they backed out and I was like, well, now I don't have a home and I don't have anybody to transport my animals. And I had to get out. Like I only had a certain amount of days left at the place that I was boarding. So I was stressed out. Oh my God. It was so hot. I didn't get any sleep. I did a drive from Texas to Tennessee. The drive on just like drive time is 13 hours. It took me 22 hours because I was so exhausted that I had to, and I didn't sleep. 
I had to stop gas station. I had to run around the gas station, smack my face and keep driving. My eyes were blurring the last bit because my horses were being dropped off at a new location and I didn't know how safe it was. So I had to get there when I eventually paid somebody, a new person. So I got, I had to pay like triple the amount that I would have normally had to pay to get somebody to transport my animals at the last second. And they knew that, which was stressful. And then get in my truck and drive my truck is not diesel. And then I kept stopping. So they got there way before me and I popped out of ketosis and I, I was, I felt awful, like just dirt, hypoglycemic, sleepy, tired, lack of focus, brain fog. So I doubled up on my fat. I started cranking down the fat. That's all you can do if you don't have a gallbladder issue and then loving myself more, giving myself breaks, just giving myself breaks. And my mom wanted me to come every weekend to go visit her. And I said, no, mom, I need, I need, I can't do that drive constantly. Blah, 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 blah. I need to, cause it's like an hour and 20 minutes. I'm like hour and 15, depending 20, depending on the traffic. I'm like, I just need to get this place nice and organized, organized. Mind you, I had to drive that drive today cause it was her 80th, but she, my mom fell and broke her ribs. So she's in a, a rehab facility. So that place is over two hours away. So four hour a day when you don't got no time, but I'm back into ketosis. I'm just a little stretched. That's I just don't have any time. I'm like putting together a challenge for you guys where I cover all three diets. I run a course page where I cover all three diets. I do consultations. Oh my God, the land, like everything, the well, the clearing off of the land, the fencing, the, 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 I got a new animal. Um, and I did that strategically that like going and you know, getting hay and having to pile the hay and, you know, you're, I bought a bunch of security cameras and I, yeah, cause we ain't playing. And then uh, a bunch of solar lights and I'm sitting there drilling and hanging and cleaning and the bush hog, it literally destroyed all these trees. And my horse was tripping on all the tr mulched trees on the ground. So by hand, on 10 acres i was cleaning trails so i get tired okay but i'm back in i'm back in ketosis so i wouldn't be able to do this live uh poor woman per paralysis of the anal uh, anal analysis okay great video appreciate you for giving us the info you do you still use colostrum um i i was getting my colostrum from ancestral supplements. I was sponsored by them. They never paid me. So no, I haven't been taking the colostrum, but when I was getting it from them for free, yeah, I took it. Um, let me see the latest geriatric specialist, Dr. Gabrielle, whatever, is that every adult should be eating at least 30 grams of protein. Yeah. This is an idiot. Sea bacon. I'm sorry, Gabrielle, to call you an idiot, but just because you got DR in front of your main do name doesn't mean you have any common sense. Uh, 30 grams, but she doesn't necessarily say one person should eat a specific total, but definitely the 30 grams per meal from, so that doesn't make any sense. Cause what if you have hypochlorhydria and you're trying to shove down 30 grams of protein? What if you're trying to get into ketosis and 30 grams of protein spiking your blood sugar facts, and then you develop hypoglycemia even more so and thyroid issue. You got to be careful what these people say. Use a glucometer. If you're a woman and and you're having 30 grams of protein per meal, you think Hunter Gathers got 30 grams of protein per meal? No. Sorry. Uh, let's see specific to 30 grams for carbs. Dr. Cyrus emphasizes ketosis for for being able to go longer. Dr. Cyrus, he says some really great things, mad respect, but he ain't the most healthy brother. Okay. I'm sorry. These people, they come out there, they got a doctor in front of their name. They haven't worked with enough people. Time hasn't gone by. They don't have enough of their own observational studies. Keto has not been studied long enough itself to give you any conclusive data on special populations. So sea bacon, just stop listening to this nonsense. I'm sorry. You know, Lori says that she loves horses. I don't mean to be rude. I'm not trying to be rude, but um, 
your food. Eating 110 grams of protein. Uh, sea bacon, go get a glucometer, test your ketones, and test your glucose on 110 grams of protein at 554 and watch yourself not get into ketosis. I just done this long enough to know. Conclusively. <laughs> yes. Um, is there a meter that checks daily nutrients? I wish if not. No. There's just like apps. So no, there isn't one. Not yet. You have not fallen off the wagon for so long. My question is, what do you contribute for the, for you staying on the course? Um, so I, I have fallen off and I stay back on the course because I become disciplined and I become strict and then I eat a lot of fat and I love myself and I'm kind to myself and I give myself, I, I'm kind to myself because I'm out of ketosis. I'm not going to stress out about it. Just fix it. Uh, I've been watching you a great, great content five years now. Thank you, Talish. I drink alcohol and smoked for 30 years. I haven't had a drink or, or cigarettes for six years now. I've suffered from chronic constipation my whole adult life. You say you gotta poop. How? Uh, I drank and you drank and you smoked. So it sounds like you've got a uh, hypochlorhydria. You might have a stuck ileocecal valve. And because there are like three or four uh, possibilities, I can't tell you what you got. You can try... Uh, magnesium i hear these horses outside you can try magnesium citrate if that doesn't work then you can do a combination between magnesium citrate and oxide and if that doesn't work you either have to consider it's your thyroid or stuck valve or stretched out colon uh yes the big one the large one Oh, thank you, Jedi Run. Thank you. Going into my ninth month being back on Stephanie's strict ketogenic protocol and doing great and still waiting patiently for her book and her advice to rotate proteins. I've been, it has been awesome at helping. Uh, so rotate protein has been awesome helping to heal my gut issues. Thank you so much, Jedi Run. Thank you. Um, It's been really hard, like, because everybody sees me as so strong, like I don't get any wiggle room for feeling sorry for stuff. But I have to remind people that like right when I could have finished the book, I got a horse and I got a crazy horse. And I just spent every minute of every t hour that I could to help him because he was so abused and dangerous. And then after that, I moved to Texas and like the whole time I just, so many bad things happened. And then I moved here to raw land and it's like, I don't have anybody really helping me. I have people help me with things here and there, but like collectively I don't. And I got to keep all balls juggling in the air. So I'm going to run a challenge, you guys. I'm going to try to finish by April, but like, I don't even know if I can make it by April 1st. I think I can. I just got to make the time for it. Um... So like driving up a couple days in a row that driving over two hours, four hours a day to go see my mom has been kind of like challenging on me. Um, but I'm going to finish that book. I'm going to finish that book if it's the last thing that I do. Okay. So stay patient. It's coming. Uh, Dr. Lyons said just one pound of protein for, for like one pound of pound of protein per, per, uh, pound of weight is absolute garbage oh, God. there are no ratios you got to, guys don't understand people are like what are the ratios i'm like it's not about ratios it's about do you have enough stomach acid like do you have enough enough lean mass is your gallbladder working um do you get sleep are you insulin resistant like there are so many varying factors another nugget to keep let me see thanks for thanks thanks that this is the correct I'm from Costa Rica. We have blue zones to that live a hundred years and they eat a lot of pork and meat and whatever they grow on their lands and a lot of agriculture and over and over is dry and hot and they have the same color as the Okinawan citizens. That's awesome. Because I did a video I'm just reading the comments from my latest videos. Hey Stephanie, what if you're pregnant? If you're pregnant, you best get that stress down, you best get that blood sugar and balance, you best go to bed early. You, I've had, I've worked with a ton of people who've been pregnant, who've been breastfeeding 
on keto uh, with high fat or even carnivore with high fat. It just, you got to do a lot of the right things or you, your breast milk goes down and you don't want any complications with your pregnancy. Lori says, I went off coffee for a month and then my gallbladder went out of whack. I went back on coffee and it still hurts. <laughs> I don't mean to be laughing. I don't think it's the coffee. Uh, I'm trying to pro doing prolonged. I'm trying prolonged fast, prolonged fast and watch your gallbladder get worse. That's what makes your gallbladder work. It works. Do not do that. I have celiac and Hashimoto's. So if you've got Hashimoto's and you're fasting, this is the reason why your gallbladder is jacked up. It, well, it just was a coincidence about the coffee. Blah, 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 blah. There's, uh, there are people who've cured their cancer with prolonged fasting and, and do keto. Lori, be very, very careful that people just don't do prolonged fasting and with keto. This has nothing to do with you or anyone. We don't actually know what's going on with these people. We don't know. People could have been eating garbage and, bad, and, and did enough and put their cancer into remission. For example, my mother has a lesion still in her brain, but it hasn't grown. So uh, cured, subjective, be careful, subjective. What places would you recommend looking into moving to? I really want to move out of the city like you. Well, what do you like? I've had people wanting to move to Tennessee. I'm like, do you want land? How many acres? What do you want on your land? I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted the green pasture and wanted a forest because I don't like just a damn horse. I don't want just like open field, like flat. I wanted some elevation. I wanted fresh water and I wanted good Wi-Fi because of my business and I wanted to be near town, but I wanted to be in the county limits and not city limits. And bonuses were that it had pine trees, like pine trees are my favorite tree. How's that horse reaching my door? All right. For those who are triggered by Stephanie being um, distracted, I will do anything for my fur babies. So let me go feed my horse a carrot. I'll be right back. Or maybe I'll even bring you guys with me. Carrots in here. I want that avocado. Oh, here's some carrots. All right. Let's go say hello to my animals. He's pretty good. Once I feed him, he pretty much goes away. Dude, I hear you. Relax. Hold on a second, my people. I like that question, though, about where would you go? You know, but I hate humidity. But, you know, things are trade-off. Fresh water. Clean air. No plane streaks in the sky. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, we're gonna flip this around. What do you want? You think you're cute? Oh, you think you're so cute, huh? Oh, thunder. Cause you're a big horse and you can reach my door, huh? Yes, you can. Where's your sidekick? Huh? Yeah? Don't touch my door. Yeah? Yeah! Everybody, this is Thunder. He deserves his own channel. Yes? This was the abuse horse. You, you were abused, huh? You were, huh? Yeah? You yeah, what? <laughs> You're so cute. Where are the others? Okay. Alright, you just hold on a sec, okay? Kiss. Oh, give me a kiss. Give another kiss. One more kiss. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, kisses. Thank you. Look at that eye. It looks like a demon eye. Can I have another kiss? Can I have another kiss? No kiss. Kiss. Hold your kissy, mommy. <laughs> You're silly. Uh oh. The donkeys are coming. Hold on. Hold on. He's, he's a big ass horse. Hi, Juno. You guys, just welcome to the. This is the new edition, Juno. Wait, come over here. This is Juno. You sweet donkey. Oh, you sweet donkey. Where's the brat? Come here, Luca. Come here. Come on, Thunder. So this is the little Appaloosa. Hold on, get your You guys, no fighting. Hold on, Thunder. Stop. This is the little Appaloosa. He was gonna die until I rescued him. He's very tiny. Don't bite my finger off. And that's Luca. This is Juno, the donkey. And this is Thunder. All right, this is it, you guys. No more. No more, dude. So I have to put this barrier because they're freaking breaking my door down. You're breaking my door. Mom, kiss. You're just okay. So we're almost done with the barn. Okay, Thunder, that's enough. <laughs> Kiss? Kiss? Okay. That's it. Now go on. No more. Go. Go on. Go. Go. No more. No more. That's it. No more. Uh-uh. No more. No. Go on. Go on. No. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I'm back. Oh my God. Sorry guys. But they're 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 my kids. This is all I have. And he's walking off. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Okay. Let's get back to it. Um, let's see here. I don't mean to weight wise in terms of the scale I'm talking my clothing fits how I look and feel five for 334 pounds if that matters 17 months of keto feel great and I'm exactly where I want to be weight wise but what is the best form of exercise to lower body fat percentage there is no best exercise it's obviously going to be your large muscle groups like your legs your back your chest um but i think for weight loss it's about learning how to contract muscle properly i think a lot of people don't know how to do this sliding filament action with actin and myosin the muscle fibers they don't know how to do it they their levers are their joints. Everything's in the wrong position. Their, 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 their body's pronated, and so they can't activate the muscle. So, you know, I, I'm gonna do a, a lot of, a lot more stuff with workouts once I, because I'm gonna build like a little gym, and I'll be able to actually show you guys rather than being in the gym where the music's playing and all of this stuff. Okay, so let's get more to some more questions. Then I'm going to go because I need to relax. It's been a long day. I just haven't seen you guys for a while. It's so funny because when I don't do enough live streams, 
YouTube doesn't send out send out the notifications, but when I do lives all the time, then I get a lot more people. Um, what are they saying? Um, I was so excited. Put this over here so it doesn't blast. Put this slide back on. I was so excited to see him him have him on your show. Who? Then I realized who did I talk to? Protein reality. Oh, Dr. Silas. 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 So excited to see him on your show. Then I realized you insulted him and only reviewed one of his videos. He's he is working on a doctor. I don't know who this Leanne is. You need to relax, honey. I was actually agreeing with him on this video. There was nothing that I was criticizing him. Yeah, I did. I did say he looked uh, bloated, but that's the way he is. See, this is how people are. They get so triggered. Like, we're in this, you know, these adult people are so sensitive. This, I put, I had Dr. Siwes si in my video, and I was like, but he doesn't look healthy. You know, he has some, he was doing, like, a, you shouldn't eat too much protein. I was like, yeah, I agree with him. Like, the review of what he said was, I agree with him. And then I said, but he doesn't look healthy. So that, I'm, I'm, I'm just, like, wondering about that. She's like, and you're, you try kindness, your California attitude remains. Oh my God. People are absolutely ridiculous. Leanne, I'm not your girl. You need to go follow someone else who's going to be like a robot and, to, and, and like not say what they think. He looks bloated straight up. So what's going on with this health? That's the way it is. If you're going to take advice from people, they need to be healthy themselves. Or they need to ex express that they're struggling. That's my opinion. May not be your opinion. That's my opinion. Leanne, don't follow me. Unfollow me. I've just come across this lady after starting Keto Carnivore about one month ago to stop seizures. They started in 2004 after a head injury. And I'm wondering what is your qualifications, my qualifications. So I explain what my qualifications are. And that's just with working with people. And if that works for you, awesome. If it doesn't work for you, you can go to John Hopkins and they can get, put you on too much protein. I work with a couple of people who've got epilepsy and successfully stopped the seizure. So that's my experience. Yes. I'm so glad I got an attitude. So I'm not a robot. I'm actually a, a real person. Um... I've been carnivore for over a year. It's so interesting because I think if I followed somebody, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want someone to just explain to me what I want to hear. I want to know the good, the bad, the ugly. Cause I remember in the beginning, I was so desperate to learn. I was so desperate, like anything, because there was no information about keto when I first started this journey years and years and years ago that, you know, if somebody was like, Hey, Stephanie, you're doing this wrong, or that's ridiculous, or why are you eating almond flour, or are you contradicting yourself? I'd be like, oh, okay, I didn't know. So what fat should people eat? I, I, would, I was so desperate to learn. And that really resonates with the person that I am. I'm always trying to go and find out the deep, the deep dive. Really, let's go and find out what the truth is, because you can't learn from a lie, right? You can't learn from a false image. If you're struggling, we people need to tell the truth they need to say if they're struggling like how i popped out of ketosis because if people look at me and be like oh she's 55 she's super fit like everything's perfect in her life that would give you the wrong image so i have to tell you this is when i have a bad day this is when things don't go well this is what i think about other people that are not being honest and they don't tell the truth that's what i think I think because i know that everybody has a bad day you could, because it's so easy to lose your electrolytes on keto or carnivore. It is so easy to become potassium imbalanced, sodium, potassium, magnesium. The whole thing goes whack, whack-a-doodle. People develop thyroid issues. They de uh, develop uh, constipation or loose stool. And if a guru is not telling you, yeah, I had diarrhea for the longest time. Like I had diarrhea for six months. Then you're like, oh, okay. Like, and if you tell somebody, oh, it only lasts two weeks, your diarrhea, but then your diarrhea is lasting six months and you're confused. 
that's who I am. My whole channel is about calling out and saying what I really think. That's what I'm about. I'm still waiting for you to tell me that coffee is okay. It's not okay. And that's like, I would say that coffee is awful. It's, you know, I did a coffee video about it, you know, that adrenaline is 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 crowding and, and clogging up your adenosine receptor sites. <clears throat> your body's supposed to naturally flip from uh, uh, from cortisol to to melatonin, and it can't because your adenosine receptor sites are completely clogged with stuff. The anti-relaxant <laughs> cortisol. What happened to the other donkey? I don't know. She she's lying out there somewhere. She's the girl, so she's she's more pensive, and they're all like they're boys. They're so boys. She's so gentle. You give her a cheat treat, it feels like a feather is touching your hand. Where like my other donkey, he opens his mouth so big, I was like, dude, you take off my whole arm. Um, but she's good. She's good. Are you more carnivore or more keto? I would say that by, I, I, I consider myself to be keto because I think that carnivore should be keto, should be high fat. So I don't eat vegetables all the time. I eat vegetables either not at all, but I always have avocado or I'll eat vegetables just one time a day. So I really ride the line of carnivore, but I don't have a lot of vegetables anymore. Mm-mm. Uh, I've been carnivore for over a year and still low iron. What's the problem? Besides liver, what other organs might help and how much? I don't think it's about, somebody's asking how much, first of all, kidney has, has iron in it as well. But it's not about what other organ this woman should be eating more. It's more about why do you still have low iron? And it sounds like you have leaky gut. So we got to deal with, are you eating other foods that are creating a weak gut wall? Are you not, do you have stress? Are you not sleeping well? We got to figure out why you're not absorbing the iron and then fix that and then eat the liver because that's a problem. Oyster extract also. Oysters have iron. Hi, doctor. <laughs> what about cultured butter? Can histamine intol uh, intolerance use it? Everyone is different with butter. Butter is a very high histamine food. So, I don't know. You just got to go and experiment. Um, lately, I've been living almost entirely off of raw liver and, and raw soft cheese like Mobier beer. I haven't had any issues with raw cheese. Occasionally, I have fresh sardines I, I gut and cook. Okay, I gut and cook with bones or some oysters and mackerel. Once in a while, I have some chicken and some pecans. Why? Some, the pecans or some small minute unripe Bartlett pear. This is not ketogenic. So I know this person's not producing their ketones eaten this way. That's the extent of it. So far I haven't needed any other sources of electrolytes anymore. If you're not, you dead. Well, this is long. My blood ketones usually are max. I ditched the butter and muscles muscle meats because I could never get enough electrolytes no matter what I did. The chlorides didn't work either and was always getting random histamine issues, heart palpitations. Can't eat avocados because of the histamine. This actually seems sustainable so far. I guess this unintentionally ended up being something kind of like arginous vanderplus. Not with not with them pecans, mom on a child. And pears and cheese detoxing the body. I don't know if that's actually true or not. I don't think that that's not ogenous. He's he's like all about just the meat. Don't know what I don't. I don't need any fiber. I can feel the raw cheese breaking everything down there and moving it along. I think this person's in total denial. Cheese is not going to make your motility any better. Has a lot of more minerals and nutrients than butter. I can feel it. Gonna have to see it messes with the hormones or who knows. I probably am trying to throw in some moisture extract and maybe some colostrum just for the heck of it. I don't know why they wrote that long thing for. I try raw I tried raw sheep cheese and decreased bloating. I was like, 
Driver sheep cheese in it decreased bloating. That's good. Sheep and goat cheese are much better than the cow for the casein. Yeah, actually seem to work legitimately probiotic, especially the aged soft cheeses from what I've learned. I don't know this person's blood sugar. These are just comments. You see my mornings change. I work night shifts. Some days I eat and work at work. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I eat when I get home, then go to bed. And sometimes I just go to bed. I guess what I'm asking, is there just a certain amount of time to do fasting for your, to fasting blood sugar? Okay. This whole person who's got a night shift job and sometimes they eat and sometimes they don't. The body likes, especially with food, it likes to match the food with your metabolism and it likes to match the food with your routine. It likes regularity so your body knows how to stabilize the blood sugar. So that right there that you're eating late or you're skipping meals, I mean, go get a glucometer and check. Say, hey, all in this stream, Steph mentioned not taking powdered electrolytes, but, but to absolutely supplement magnesium and has mentioned this in all of the magnesium recommendations would powdered magnesium be okay yes or should i strictly be drinking liquid no no powdered is fine especially magnesium glycinate let me take some here guys just comments best thing to heal the gut there is no best thing that implies one it's a whole lifestyle. It's, you know, do you, and finding out what your existing health is. Do you have gluten intolerance? Do you have low stomach acid? Do you have a parasitical infestation? Do you have candida overgrowth? Do you have bad sleep? Do you have any histamine responses? Are you allergic to any foods? The New York Post wrote an article about keto diets linked to increased risk of heart disease. <laughs> it's just stupid. Honey child, just ignore it. You know, so funny, the New York Post just interviewed me. <laughs> uh, they interviewed me about two weeks ago, but it was for skateboarding. Anyway, also major props to taking great care of them. Thank you. Just listen to Dr. Gundry and Dr. David Pullmutter talking about keto, and David was talking about eating fermented carbs. I stopped all fruits and veg in December. Some people's guts cannot handle fermented foods because of the, the extreme amount of, I think it's lactobacillus. And if your body can't handle it, you can make a dysbiotic gut become even worse. So people have to be very gentle with probiotics if they don't know the state of their gut. What bacteria they need or not need. Kat says, I love when you speak your mind. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm going to end this by saying to you guys, because um, there are so many, I mean, I've got comments for years on my channel. You guys see, I was like reading some comments. Um, I think that, you know, I just want to leave you guys with this, the, the, these thoughts. It's very, very important that you guys know your body. A lot of people think that they know their body, but they don't. Like they don't exercise or they don't get in nature, or they don't put their feet in the dirt, or they don't get enough vitamin D. And then people say that they know their body and it's already a subjective understanding of actually knowing yourself. And um, it's just so important to look at this, this idea of, of the way you breathe and the way you sit. And the way you quiet your brain down and connect connecting to the circadian rhythm is these are things that are nuanced in our everyday life, how we breathe. A lot of people, somebody was asking me on my course page, I gulp a lot of air when I eat. What do I do? And I was like, that's a really great question because a lot of people inadvertently, when they eat, they just, it's like a tick that they have done for years. And that would be that you'd have to excuse me, as I kind of burp, you would have to suck up air and then take a bite because then you can't suck up anymore. All these little things matter and it sucks to be so completely picky on everything that you do in a 24 hour day. But if you have the patience to do that, 
you will unlock the key to understanding yourself better. Don't be distracted. Life should not be easy. If life is easy, you would not be challenged by anything. You'd be a hot mess if everything was easy. A lot of people who've got money, they are depressed because they have nothing to strive for. Peter says, I know green vegetables have a lot of oxalates in them. However, I feel good when I juice, when I juice them. What are your thoughts? Stop. You know, Peter, it's just, it's very, it, it goes along with what I just said. People think that they feel better. And maybe you came from a world of eating garbage. And so now you're eating plants. But I'm going to tell you right now, I had stevia, I had spinach, and I did this, did this for years. And I developed kidney crystals and I had back pain. I was like, what? like in over and over I was doing, um, I was doing a licorice root tea, like just natural licorice root. Everything was high oxalate and I gave myself kidney crystals and, uh, it was awful. Um, you don't feel it until you, until it's too late. So why bother with this green juice? Because you feel that it's better when it's going to create problems in time. So I would say no to it and have it very sparingly. I still fighting against my thyroid. They did an uh, uh, ultrasound last week. So hopefully I have some answers. Just be very careful with the thyroid, Larry, because if you have any nodules or anything going on, the first thing they want to do is like, they want to like to take away your parathyroid. And you just really, really, really have to be careful with doctors because they're too aggressive, whatever, whatever their treatments are. It's either with medications or removing an organ. So be very careful. Everything is solvable, sol solvable, if you guys are patient enough to learn. But some people are, they're just not patient enough. They want things now. And they're like, oh my God, it's too complicated. I have to eat. I, you, know, I, I, you know, I don't have a variety of food or whatever people feel. You have to be very patient. And those are the only people that are going to make it. I'm seeing this as a type 2 diabetic. I, I can just disagree with you on this one. I eat high protein diet. My blood sugar levels are low. A1C is low, fasting glucose. See, it didn't give me a single number. <laughs> One says that my blood sugar is low, but when somebody's saying that their blood sugar is low and eating high protein, it's not, they're comparing themselves to carbs. So if you're eating carbs and you're eating protein, your blood sugar is going to spike higher with carbs. But if you're trying to be in ketosis, this person's blood sugar is going to be too high, guaranteed. They didn't give me a single number and they didn't tell me a ketone number. So these comments are hilarious sometimes. I know green vegetables have a lot of oxalates in them. However, I feel good. Does it, does it remove some of the oxalates or antinutrients? I just juicing liberates the oxalic acid into the water. It's horrible to juice vegetables. It's just god awful. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Hello Stephanie started carnivore three weeks ago. Down 13 pounds. I'm off all the tea and sweeteners. I have zero hunger. I'm having a hard time getting my fat in. So if you go to Kelly Hogan who's done carnivore for a very long time. She just had her gallbladder removed. Be very careful to eat too much protein and not enough fat. Just saying, if your copper is low, you won't take in iron no matter how much you intake. And that's a really good cut. Thank you, Jamie. So that is true if your copper is low. So eating organ meats, but I do think, Jamie, this person said they're eating liver. And if they're eating liver, which is balanced with copper, something else is wrong. All right, guys, we've gone an hour and it's time for me to go and enjoy this life that's beautiful. And I hope that you guys find your way, whatever diet you do, you don't have to listen to me. It doesn't matter if you agree or not, literally doesn't matter. There are other people that will all fit the narrative that you feel that you want to hear no matter what you do. But this is just what I do. And... Um, yeah. My, I'm still reading the comments below. I got to stop reading them. 
Uh, they come in so fast that sometimes you can't get to all the comments. Um, thank you everyone who did donated to the super chat. And um, I really shouldn't have gone live now because it was after driving and consultations and fixing horses and writing material for my course page. Um, just too much doing, trying to do too, do too much in one day. But I was I haven't had a live in so long. I was like, I need to just get it in. So just say hello to my people. All right, you guys have a wonderful night and comment below. Tell me more, what more you want me to talk about, no matter what it is. And, uh, if you guys want to learn more, I, I have a calendar that's open for consultations. I'm going to run a challenge, get ready. I'm working my ass off on it. And for those who feel that they trust what I'm saying, this could be very advantageous for you. And uh, my Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic, and my Facebook page is Stephanie the Business Person. I'm 55, going on 56. I want to dive more into hormones. I always tell people it's not calories that make you overweight, it's the fact that your hormones can't deal with the calories. So if you got to fix your thyroid, if you have to fix your leptin, if you have to fix your ghrelin, if you have to fix your insulin, your cortisol, your reproductive hormones, that's what I do. Right? I just don't talk about protein and, and ratios and percentages. We get down to the nitte grite. I'm out. Peace. Thank you, everyone, for this live uh, from Niagara, Canada. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone. MCT oil is a waste of money, by the way, LH, because it's just processed. And I realize if you want lower acid benefits, just get coconut oil. It's much cheaper. Get it uh, uh, raw and unprocessed. And I'm out. Bye, guys. Energy, energy, energy. 55, going on 56. 16 years doing this damn thing. Don't believe me? Go back to those videos where I look awful and I'm rambling my ass off. Going, energy! <laughs> but it was a lot younger. Anyway, bye, guys.